Don't you love all the wonderful words of wisdom we hear from children? Christmas time, we gather together as family, and it's wonderful to see the nieces, nephews, grandchildren all growing up, maturing, and becoming wise. Lots of changes in their life. I'm happy to announce my granddaughter took her first steps. One, and a, uh, one year and one month, yesterday, she got up and walked across the uh, living room to her daddy, and what a wonderful moment. She's all full of words of wisdom that bring insights, great words of love, great words of all kinds of insight, as all children are. And I love to listen to them because they say some great things. Here's some words of wisdom from children. One, I love this, never trust a dog to watch your food. That's Patrick, age 10. Never, never let that happen. You know, and when your dad is mad at you and asks you, do I look stupid? Don't answer him. <laughs> never tell your mom that her diet's not working, says Michael, age 14. Stay away from prunes, good advice, says Randy, nine. Never allow your three-year-old in the same room as your school assignment, says Tracy, age 14. Never hold a dustbuster and a cat at the same time. I agree. Good word of wisdom. You can't hide a piece of broccoli in a glass of milk, says Amir, age nine. If you want a kitten, well, start out by asking for a pony, says Naomi. Sooner or later it comes down to just that. Felt markers, now this is good advice for all of us, so listen clearly. Felt markers are not good to use as lipstick. Wise words for all of you who want to brighten up that appearance. And never try to baptize a cat. Well, we love all these wonderful words of wisdom. They mean so much to our lives. And today, I also want to point out that two wonderful women are visiting with us that have a wonderful history of bringing wisdom to my life. And I'm so delighted to have Barbara Grimes and Barbara Peterson from Florida visiting with us today. It's truly because of their words of wisdom that I'm in ministry today because there were times when I thought, I don't know if I'm cut out for this or if I really want to do this. And they brought some great insights and inspiration to my life. And for that, I will eternally be grateful. I appreciate it so much. Well, I love it when I hear words of wisdom. I love it when I get great advice. And I know you do too. And today's text is all about that. It's a wonderful journey of Joseph and his newfound wisdom. It's a wonderful story because as we put ourselves in it, we see, oh, these great aha moments that we cherish so much. It's wisdom born out of the struggle that we have with our human thoughts. Yep, that's what it's all about. It's the release of those things that can hold us back. It is the story of salvation for our lives as we change our thinking and we truly change our lives. Now, remember last week I spoke to you about the meaning of repentance. Repentance. That, oh, it's so much more than just simply saying, I'm sorry. That's lovely. But repentance is so much more. It's about making that 180-degree turn. It's about changing your thinking to, uh, concerning those actions that created the moments where you missed the mark. Because that's what the word's all about. Hey, Martia, it means to miss the mark. And when we miss the mark, it simply means that we missed a goal, the target that was set before us. We came close. Very close, but ah, something about it, we missed it. Because our thoughts kept us from our highest and best. They kept us from actually hitting that mark. Well, Joseph's incredible wisdom, this story of unfolding of insight to his, in his life, shares with us the very story for you and me. It's the story where we learn to welcome God's very best into our lives. Yes, we've got to learn to welcome the very best. Something we have a little challenge with, don't we? We're not so good about welcoming the best. We're really good at welcoming the worst. We're really good about talking the worst. We're really good about welcoming it all in our lives. But how about getting comfortable, really at ease with welcoming the very best into our lives? In fourth grade, well, recess became a great challenge for me in my life. I remember those moments. Everybody else was scrambling to go outside, but something had happened in my life that said, uh-uh, uh-uh, recess, it's not for me. You see, they'd introduced something called soccer. <laughs> soccer, yeah, 
Simple. You've got to kick the ball. That's all it is. And why couldn't I kick the ball? I don't know whether it was just at that age in life I wasn't there. I mean, I had legs that could swing. What was wrong with that? Why couldn't they hit the target? Why couldn't they kick the ball? Why is it that every time I hit the ball, it seemed to go in the wrong direction? Soccer didn't seem to be my calling. And my belief was that, you know what? I'm never going to be good at this. Something grabbed me, something someone said, some experience I had. Now I welcome the very worst in my life. Even after all the opportunities, I said, you know, I'm not even going to try anymore. Recess comes, I'm not going outside. I'm big thinking now of reasons to welcome the very worst in my life by embracing, saying I need to stay because my homework's done, not done. I, I maybe fell, fell behind on the quiz or fell behind on something, asked the teacher, could I make up for a lost time or a mistake that I made? Teacher thought I was this dedicated student. He didn't realize it was just a moment where I seemed to welcome the very worst, and I wasn't able to welcome the very best of possibilities. You and I know that something happens in our life. We can all look back to moments. We laugh at this childhood moment, but we've had moments maybe yesterday or this past week where something happened and we no longer became comfortable believing that the very best is ours. Instead, we began to welcome what we think was the very worst and we begin to see the glass half full and begin to say, well, that's life's new norm. That's just the way life is. I accept that. And we lower our expectations and we stop our believing and something happens. Well, you know it. Well, you may have stepped out in faith. You really thought you were stepping out and doing something wonderful and then it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to turn out. So you stop stepping out in faith. You stop practicing and exercising it. Just like me, someone had to say, you will never be good at soccer if you stay off the field. And I'm telling you, you'll never be good as a person of great faith who steps out and believes for the miraculous if you never get back in and practice it. That's what it's all about in the journey of our lives. So learning to welcome God's best requires some change. It requires an 180 turn. It really requires some repentance in our lives that simply says, you know what? I got to change my thinking. I maybe actually have to say I'm sorry for thinking the very worst or embracing the very worst in this scenario or this activity. Or even when I look at the soccer field, I have to realize, wow, I need to change my thinking. One of the days, I'll bend it like Beckham. One of these days, you watch. I'll be out there. I'll be the superstar in the soccer field. Why? Because I'm going to change my thinking from expecting the very worst to now embracing what is the very best. And this is the story we find in the beautiful scripture as it comes alive. Joseph's wisdom comes from this transformational journey, a journey of newfound wisdom, an awakening, a spiritual awakening, and a moment that changed and transformed his life. And today, as we read the story, it transforms, transforms you and I. So let this story come alive as you become Joseph for a moment. You, put yourself in that place. Oh, wait a minute, you already are because let me tell you, the story is really not Joseph's story. It's your story. Let's look at it. Joseph is so excited all of a sudden. He has just purchased a bride in the custom of the times. Mary, wow. You can imagine, maybe he's even bragging on the streets. Yeah, Mary and I, we're going to get married. She's pretty hot, yeah. You know what? Sweet, innocent, angelic, you know, kind, tenderhearted. Dang, I got a good one, didn't I? You know what? He's bragging to his friends of his soon-to-be wife and all the wonders of this arrangement, and then suddenly something happens. What? Mary's with child? How did this happen? It changes everything in a flood of all the norms of the day and age that the consciousness of people thinking of that time that says, wait a minute, this is not a good thing. I got to get rid of her. I got to dump this chick. I got to get rid of her now. You can imagine what it's like and then suddenly you realize, wait a minute, I'm a kind man. I really don't want to embarrass Mary. I don't want to cause problems for her. I'm secretly find a way to release this engagement and divorce her out of any marriage arrangements. Why? Well, this is the norm. You see, the norm is that 
when we see these experiences where we act in the common, everyday way of everyone's thinking that says, this has got to be a bad thing, and I've got to dismiss myself. Even though it looks like something unusual and strange in its circumstances, I need to dismiss myself from it. And it's only when Joseph rests for a moment, he falls asleep. It quiets his mind that the message of God comes to him. And let me tell you, this is so beautiful because for you and I, in the midst of our questioning and stress and turmoil of our lives, it's only when you quiet your mind, rest, be at peace, that the very solutions of the sweet, sweet spirit of God comes to you in sweet whispers, words of wisdom to our lives. Suddenly it's there in that stillness, in that moment, Joseph begins to, understand how wonderful it is for there's a wisdom that's born in joseph as he hears these beautiful thoughts do not be afraid because wisdom is never found in expressions of confining fear that holds us back or imprisoning doubt we're never going to find wisdom there but when we i'm not going to be afraid there's not enough money to pay the bills i'm not going to be afraid i don't know about tomorrow in this relationship I'm not going to be afraid. I don't know what the future holds as we turn around the corner and look at 2050. Oh, I'm not going to be afraid. Because in those moments when we release all of that uh, anxiety that may come to us or that feeling that we think we should be afraid because that's the norm, that's what everybody else would be doing, we're now resting in an openness to allow, to receive those wonderful words of wisdom. The wisdom that says, Joseph, don't be afraid because that which is born in Mary is born of the Spirit. That which looks so unusual, Joseph, get this, I want to tell you this, it looks out of the norm, so different, so crazy, extraordinary. It's actually of God. It's actually of His Spirit. This is the great wisdom that comes, and well, honestly, it often, sometimes great things don't always look the same or reflect what we think is the norm. But that's the way of God. Ever bringing something new to our lives to challenge our narrow way of thinking, where we constantly want to draw in on our thought process, our fear and doubt say limitation, lack, and there's just not a lot of possibilities. And then something God does is out of the norm, crazy, bizarre, and opens our way of thinking once again to possibilities. Something challenges us to think in new ways. What then you're, wait, you're telling us that possibly that LGBT people could be born of the Spirit? That they're God's gift? Yes. That unique people in this world that are different, that don't fit into society's norms, could be born of the Spirit? Yes. So you're saying that, what, to break out of the mold of society, what, we could be born of the Spirit? Yes. That God works in amazing, wonderful ways that will challenge our limited thinking and stretch us, stretch us. Yes, stretch us to experience a God-given wisdom that is not limited to norms, but is always saying yes, yes, yes. You see, that's Joseph's discovery. That's your, you and I, our discovery too. Joseph's wisdom, oh, can we own this? Can we call it our wisdom? Yes, we've got to take it on. Because it comes to us when we refuse to be blinded to possibilities. Refuse it. Because all of us, the appearances of everything around us, we constantly say, it ain't going to happen for you. We get so blinded to possibilities that we don't even think that they're out there. We don't even express and, or even contemplate about them. Because we say this is the confining area of our limitation. This is where we are. Normality says we're stuck here. And you can't be anything greater or anything better because your parents weren't greater or better. Your community isn't that great or it's this or that. And so we are blinded to any kind of thinking of possibilities. Do you know the scripture says in John 7, 4, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. Judge with the mind of Christ is what it's inviting us to do. To think and to open with all limited possibilities of that are there before us. Stop judging by what you see because honestly we're looking in the wrong way and the wrong places. 
That wisdom that came to Joseph was just that, one who cares. It says, wait a minute, this is of God? I, I'm not seeing that. Because the appearances don't look that way that this could be of God. But then when we release those kinds of judgments, we begin to see the whole world differently. So let me ask you, where are your eyes? Where are you looking? Very voluptuous woman made it very clear to the young man who was staring at her. Hey, hey, up here. The face. The face is not below. It's up here. Excuse me, if you want to get to know me, look up here. We laugh about this kind of scenario. We've seen it played out in television and in comedy. We've seen it played out in life, and, well, maybe you've been part of it too. If you want to know the things of God, you've got to look up here into the heavenly realm. Start looking for the spiritual blessings that are bound around you despite the appearances to the contrary. Start looking and saying, wait a minute, I know where the face of God dwells. It's in the unlimited possibilities for my world. That's where I want to make this connection. That's what I want to believe in. And for Joseph, it was an amazing experience for him. Because you've got to learn that you don't judge or limit or view your world simply by your past experiences. I learned that in fourth grade when I began to judge and make formula opinions based on one time on the soccer field when everybody laughed at me and I was done. And you may have had similar experiences. Well, you base everything now on those past experiences of your life. You think based on everything, well, if it happened 10 years ago, it's going to happen the same today. If it happened 20 years ago, it's going to happen the same today. In the sense of that, I was a failure then, I'll be a failure now. And we live our lives from those perspectives until we suddenly have this sort of Joseph thought that say, I don't care about what the past may be or society's norms. I'm now going to experience something in a fresh new way. Because let me tell you this, every inventor will tell stories that they said, I didn't create the ultimate product on the first try. So I've done my research. And based on past experiences, I could believe that every time I tried something, it's not going to work, but I press on and believe that there will be new discoveries for me, and I will get it. And they eventually do. And voila, we have incredible inventions all around us that we take for granted. But it's people who've lived through those experiences. They welcomed a wisdom that says, I know that there are infinite possibilities regardless of what past experience or what may be the norms or what may others may think. Is this the right way to think about a certain scenario? But God is doing a new thing. For the whole work of the gospel is that new things, new things, new things are unfolding. This is the very truth. Wisdom says that we're be open to those new things. Joseph was called be open to something so different, so different, so controversial, new. Now let me tell you this, in the world we live in, there should be a big sign that flashes out across a lot of churches and a lot of spiritual community. Caution here, caution. There are Christians who are fear of, afraid of change. Whoa, because truly today's world is that. We're afraid of new insights, new truths. We're afraid of going into do. We like to repeat over and over again, maybe our pasts, and suddenly we come to those borders and those boundaries and wonder what's beyond that. Oh, but we're afraid to go there. We're afraid to move across the oceans to discover an America. We're afraid to travel the Himalayas to, find, to discover a new land or a new area. We're afraid to follow a star, maybe to find a manger. You see, it's when we are Christians who are afraid of change, we'll never grow, we'll never experience the truth and wisdom. Well, can you imagine? Can you imagine a child growing up and going to school and being afraid of education? Wow, what would that look like? Fearful to leave the run, dick, run books, you know? Remember those? Okay, maybe I'm dating myself. But you may recall those early readers you had that were simple, run, Jane, run, run, dick, run, all those kind of wonderful things, and you thought those were the hottest hit books. You were a reader. Whoa, you know, you were like, okay, look at me. I can read. I got my book under my arm. I am looking so good with my run, dick, run. I've got that down pat. And then we look, say, well, is there more? Wait a minute, there's more than that? 
there's more to read and we got to learn more we're fearful can you imagine being fearful to move beyond those simple understanding can you imagine being like stuck with addition well we know two plus two is four but ooh, someone's trying to bring in some multiplication don't be doing that i am sticking with addition you try to bring on multiplication you're going to screw up my life and my way of thinking i'm not open to any kind of change i'm st i love where i am you see this is how ridiculous we may see it is for a child fearing education but oh it kind of mirrors sometimes our journey of our lives we're afraid to step out and say what new truths are there in god what's a new revelation that god wants to bring to me you see second corinthians 5 17 says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold new things have come this means anyone who understands and welcomes the christ well they become a new person they experience change and transformation the old life is gone and the new has begun there's a change and a transformation in their life they are new people they've experienced an evolution a transformation that's amazing Here's where we want to just embrace this because it's not just a moment of transformation but a lifetime of moving into new revelations new understandings and new spiritual plateaus new levels how many remember saying i'm going to another level we sang that song in this church over and over and over and over again we had to take a break from it because we sang it so much but it was our proclamation of going to a new level are you ready because you sang it you proclaimed it we're calling ourselves to go to that new level. And that's the day-to-day -day journey of a spiritual walk with God. Honestly, there are far too many people who are afraid of the possibilities that stand right in front of them. Right in front of them. And their first thought is a Joseph thought that says, I gotta put this blessing away because I don't understand it. I don't comprehend it. I'm not sure about it. Blessings that come to our lives through generosity can be very one example of this because giving well you see it's a blessing and it's right in front of our lives the opportunity to give but we think well giving that means loss right if i give it away what will i have now that's the outward appearance we all get that you see we're afraid to give because we think if i give it away I, the outward appearance says I'll have less. I won't have anything. But the spiritual appearance knows that the experiences that we have are only going to unfold with more and become greater as we give a portion of it. We know that it calls us to give to receive. And a lot of us are waiting around to receive before we give. And we get it all backwards. Because we're looking at the appearances that says, I don't see that there's enough here. So why could I step out in generosity? And why would I live from a generous perspective? Because the appearances say that. But we don't judge by appearance. Our eyes are up here and we're looking in the heavenly realm. And we then discover that as I sow, I reap. One can never know the bounty of a harvest if you keep every seed. And if you're waiting to plant that seed wait for the harvest to come first, you miss the point. You see, here it is. But if I give this seed away, sow it in the ground, I know that there will be a moment of great harvest for me. So we may be afraid of these blessings that are right there in front of us, afraid to experience them, afraid to allow them unfold because we simply don't understand as we look constantly through the physical eye. But wisdom always speaks the word possibility possibility and as joseph rests in the quietness of his mind the angel speaks to him the messenger of god comes to him the revelation of truth comes to him of great possibilities and that wonderful wisdom speaks in that moment of calm speaking words of wisdom let it be let it be when i find myself in trouble holy spirit comes to me speaking words of wisdom let it be and in my hour of darkness wisdom is standing right in front of me speaking words of wisdom let it be allow it to be let it be whispering words of wisdom and when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree there will be an answer 
For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. And when the night is cloudy, and we all know this moment, and when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine on until tomorrow. Let it be. Let it be. Speaking words of wisdom. That's what the Holy Spirit was doing to Joseph. Oh, I can imagine in this wonderful moment of revelation as he wakes up and he wonders and he understands, wow, I get it now. This wisdom began to unfold in his life and he understood, I let the all good that is God now become mine and through every experience as I embrace this journey with Mary, I continue on and move forward. So Joseph's wisdom, ah, I love this. It's our wisdom. It's your wisdom. It's ours together. It's God's wisdom. It says, today I am open to new things, new experiences, new truths. There's a fresh awakening to the presence of God. Today I allow myself to be open to newness flowing into my experience. And I give myself permission to open my life and be receptive. Even though I don't know what it looks like even though the appearance may be different, even though I may be uncertain what is all around me, I say yes, I say yes to it because there is a higher understanding that's unfolding in my life. There's a higher work and power at work within me. It is God that is manifesting something wonderful and the best is there for me. Today, I invite you to the wisdom of Joseph and let it be our wisdom. Amen.